Mic test, mic test. Now, head back to the bridge and did my training. I pretty much think I got everything I needed to get. Still, this uh, last little bit of stuff I got. Buy whatever I need. Very that. Oh, empty bottles. I have no empty bottles. It is um, none of that stuff. Me. Ingredients for whatever. I can get more stuff on the house. Any new armor this person's gonna give me? No oh, new armor, no nothing. Alright man, so that's it. So it's officially time to head off. Stuff we can do. Okay, one more time. So hey, one more time. And, and it's time to dip. Get to the bridge and let's get the hell on a general almost overpowered ass. I mean, I'm pretty sure I got it. Wait, but I mean, just look at all that gold. I'm pretty sure I have enough to buy whatever I need when I get to wherever I hell I'm. Oh, that's right. I was supposed to go to sleep. <laughs> Let's move to the sleeping quarters. Alright. What are you doing here at this hour? What about you, Fidel? I just couldn't get to sleep. <sighs> Me neither. Hey, you want to go have sex? What? You know what? <laughs> We've come so far on this journey. Yeah. Beyond the sky is pretty far, to say the least. It's not just the physical distance. We've experienced so many things that no normal Rasulians have. Things we didn't even know were possible. And we've learned even more. That's true. I swear, those days we spent hanging out with Ted and Stahl, they seem like they ended many eons ago. From here, they do seem distant. Recently, Fidel, I feel like you've been distant too. I don't think I have. Yes, you have. Some of it's out of your control, like what's happened with the war and with Feria. You've set your sights on somewhere far away. I'm sorry. Don't apologize. That makes me sound like the villain here. Then what do I do? Stay by my side. For all eternity. I'll never ever forgive you if you try to leave me behind. All right. Tomorrow, I'm going to do my absolute best to save Faria. So, you won't mind if I... Say at least one selfish thing, will you? Please, Fidel. Stay by me. Then they dip off to have babies. They're gonna make some babies. Some babies. Have a baby by me, baby. Be a millionaire.
ain't got to do no bullshit. Name like the oh, man. Girl, what the fuck is this? Hmm. You know what? Still get turtle? No, I cannot. Five hundred. That's not enough. Your pathetic policies cannot save Kronos. Why can't you see that you're dooming our people to be Federation slaves? Starting a civil war serves only to deplete our national resources. Have you no backbone? A craven fool like you has no right to rule us. There's nothing more here to discuss. All that's left is for us to crush the Federation and Kronos's lapdog government. I'm sorry I couldn't do better, Captain Kenny. If we haven't convinced him by now, I doubt we ever will, Mr. President. The only option we have left is to engage them. Indeed. I knew it would come to this. Why the hell did you bother talking to him? Could you please order your ship to retreat to a safe distance? I'm confident we can handle the fighting ourselves. Thank you. And best of luck. Captain? Three of the enemy ships look to be going on the offensive. Got it. All right, people. Time to get this operation underway. In the name of galactic peace, we are going to head into battle against the rebel Kronos forces led by General Alma. Fidel, your group will do what it needs to help the sisters. Understood. Okay. Now open an audio link between our ships and the Kronos governmental forces. Audio link is now established. This is Emerson T. Kenny, captain of the Pan-Galactic Federation ship Charles D. Gold. My vessel will serve as the Kronos Governmental Forces flagship, as directed by the Federation's Central Command and Kronos's President Mutal. It's up to every last one of us to ensure Kronos remains at peace rather than plunges into chaos. So let's go out there and give them hell. Kenny, over and out. Time to get this operation underway. That was a motivational speech. Set a course. 90 mark 135. What's the damage for both sides? Our shields deflected the entirety of their attack. No damage to report. One governmental warship has been destroyed. Another has taken heavy damage. Two more, enough to render them inoperable. Only one rebel ship has sustained heavy damage. Should we pull back and rethink our strategy? As a soldier, you should know that giving the enemy more time here would be fatal. We can't withdraw now. Maybe so. But continuing to fight would only increase our losses. Uh, excuse me, Captain. If I may. I know that, but it doesn't matter. We'll have to go right for General Alma then. Ferry is the only thing fueling their resistance. Therefore, if we defeat Alma and get her back, we'll lose their reason to fight. That's easier said than done. Alma's most likely barking orders from the safety of their base, situated on that large asteroid. The shield around it will make an approach impossible. Actually, it just might be feasible. While we were traveling to this sector, I was able to analyze a portion of the data on space-time symbology we accumulated. I theorize that if Relia were to use her power, we could manipulate space-time in such a way that it neutralizes their shield. With practice, it could likely even disable the whole thing. Her current skills, however, should suffice. We can likely still negate a large enough portion of the shield to pass through. In short, going after Alma directly is well within the realm of possibility. But I don't know if I can control my powers well enough. I'll offer what support I can by analyzing her psi waves. Come on, Relia. Let's go save Faria together. In other words, get your ass in gear with your little Sesame Street slash Pac-Man backpack. I can save my sister. I'll try hard to get it right. Emerson, please get us ready to infiltrate their base. Can do. Let's go. Delacroix, prepare to transport us to the coordinates we got from President Mutal. 
Sir, you have a fleet to command. You can't just go running. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Sorry, Delacroix. The General Alma calls. Don't worry. You'll do a great job in my stead, First Officer. <laughs> I like that she just got locked out. Deck two, transporter. Just think, if you could succeed at manipulating space-time, completely nullify shields, you'd be invincible. I assume that is exactly why Kronos was researching the ultimate script in the first place. For them to engrave something so terrifying on a small girl. The technology probably won't work unless they use a living being. Thank God it was Fidel. What about him? It's good that he was the one really opened up to about everyone. <sighs> Agreed. We go. If any random thing changed. Oops, you don't know. Oh well. Start will neutralize the shields. I'm ready when you are. <sighs> no. Incredible. How'd it go? Think it'll work? Not right now. Something seems to be disrupting Relia's field. My sister, she... It would appear that Faria is currently emitting a field of her own. What if we use a shuttle to get closer while Relia has her force field up? Do you think that would help her neutralize Faria's field? According to the scanner, the field's effects deteriorate quadratically with distance. Thus, the closer Relia is to her target, the more likely she can cancel it out. Still, though, exposing a weaponless shuttle to the enemy's phase cannons is too dangerous. It may be dangerous, but there's no other way. I know I can do it. I'm okay. But if she has a shield up, wouldn't that block the... It looks like the, the you know what, never mind, it's video game logic. Indeed. The shuttle's in the cargo bay. Let's hurry. Kenny to the bridge. The bridge here. Need a favor. As long as it isn't anything absurd. We're gonna use a shuttle and fly right into the enemy's home base. Absolutely out of the question. It's too dangerous. Too bad for you, but we're gonna do it. I request that next time you take me instead of Lieutenant Trisiani. Also, if I may speak freely, sir, I'm quite shocked that I don't get to accompany you to the grand finale. I'm sorry. It's all right. In the meantime, I'll keep the Kronos governmental forces thinking you're aboard this ship. Go give General Alma the old what for, sir. I owe you one. The ship's all yours. He's a good man. He is. But he does have one glaring fault. What? That he has me for a superior officer. Never a truer word spoken. So if you don't mind shutting the hell up so we can just go.
I'll be in charge of the helm. Bridge to the captain. What? I've uploaded a projected route to your shuttle. And please take a look at it. How thoughtful. You prepared to start, Relia? You'll have to keep your signaturgy activated the whole time, but can you do that? I can. Good girl. You're not alone. Got ass. Together. Yep. Got ass. Anyway. Excuse me. Alright, fly this thing. We're ready for takeoff. For action, our field's about to come in contact with Farias. First, concentrate solely on this one finger. Okay, now sync your breathing with mine. Blam. I can't tell where you're looking. What's wrong? There's a hole in the shade of the furthest rock back on the right. He's right. By all accounts, the thing looks to be a man-made structure. You have a good pair of eyes on you, Victor. The King's Chosen often operate at night. Is this a setup? Let's take the plunge. Give you credit. It takes talent to break through that space time symbol barrier we erected. I'm glad I decided to welcome you with open doors. It was worth the wait. Your generosity is truly boundless. And now give back Faria! <laughs> ah, so the wealth decided to show up after all. How interesting that he didn't turn tail and run! Now we'll see who the true master of space-time symbology is! Fine with me. My cause is just and my victories assured. History's proof of that. Enjoy your downfall. Let's go. Faria's waiting. <laughs> 